at the quarterback position, both guys threw pick sixes. Quinn Ewers threw a pick six at the very beginning of scrimmage. Uh, Hudson Card threw a pick six in what would have been red zone work. They both had some standout moments. Hudson, Hudson also fumbled on the goal line. I was about to say, Hudson fumbles on the, oh, in, the, in that same red zone package, if I'm not mistaken. There was a fumble that Hudson was responsible for. And at the same time, Quinn Ewers was sacked like three times. And that came either a day or two after Sarkeesian. I don't want to say he went on a rant, but Sarkeesian had very strong thoughts on what taking sacks at the quarterback position means. And, you know, he went on to say some of that stuff can be offensive line related. Some of it can be coverage related. But at the end of the day, the quarterback has to be able to get the ball out of his hands and not take sacks. And Ewers had a day where he took a few sacks. At all of that bat up, they could share together. And then both guys made some plays. You know, I think Quinn Ewers had a deep throw to Casey Kane. Hudson Card had a play that in, in the red zone that people were talking about. Still, the totality of the quarterback position is that it's a major work in progress. And Anwar, if we thought Sarkeesian was going to make a quarterback decision by Tuesday, it won't be because anything that he's really seen at practice has allowed for separation to take place. I don't think either guy is winning the job, but I think he knows who he wants to pick, who he's going to pick. And that may be what this decision comes down to at the end of the day is who does he want to hitch his wagons to because it was we head to the first Monday, you know, post the first scrimmage. I don't hear anyone really standing on the table for any quarterback and saying he's definitely the guy, and we've seen it throughout camp. If you're a Texas fan, player, or coach, you hope that happens by the time practices conclude and they get ready to go into the first game. But like I said, if if they were a sign, they'd probably an under they'd be an under construction sign at this point. There's two things. There's a couple of things. When I think of of Quinn, there's a, there's the pros and cons of where he's at right now, and then we'll talk about maybe Hudson. You know, the Quinn problem or challenge. I don't say problem, but the Quinn challenge is uh, when you're young and you've been so talented for so many years, and you've been able to get by on sure talent and talent and, and Sometimes you don't do the little things that it takes to be successful at, at this at this level. And that involves really getting into the, the film study, really diving into the, the making sure you, you're an expert with the playbook and becoming a, a master of your craft. And I think what has happened with Quinn and, you know, and that's, you know, delicately putting it. I don't think Quinn was tr trying to be a master of his craft early on. I think now he's starting to understand, oh, snap, I, I've got to get better. I can't, this is not high school anymore. I just can't go out there, roll out the ball, and it's all is going to go well. No, these guys are good. And in order for me to get to where I want to be, I got to put in a little bit more work. And so I think that's what's going to happen. So I think the, the upside for your Texas fans is now that I think Quinn understands, like, oh, I've got to do more here because, oh, I, I can't just do it on talent alone or my, my, my arm or my sidearm and I can throw all these different things. There's another part of the game that he's got to work on. So, like, take a mental note because we'll come back to that catch. The other thing that, too, is, is the Hudson thing. You know, I just think, you know, one of the things I wrote about is, like, idealistically at this point in the competition, Hudson Card's been on campus for three years, second year in Sark system. You want to see that guy pulling away. You don't want him to be in a competition with a young person that's only been on campus since January. And you want to hear more positive reports. Uh, the fact that you have, we're not hearing that is definitely a little bit disappointing. So to your point, you know, he's got to make a decision soon. So does he go with the, the kid who's saying, okay, now I understand what needs to be done and who may have the higher upside? Does he take maybe, you know, go with Hudson again? Neither one has blown the doors off, uh, but you know you, you're hoping that it something happens 
that makes Sark say, all right, this is what it is. But to your point, Catch, he just may have to go with his gut at this moment, and then that's just going to be who he goes with. Real quickly, to kind of go through all of those things just quickly. Number one on Quinn, I think I think you nailed it. I mean, I don't know that it can be said much better. I think it comes down to we've all been in situations where we've thought we've worked hard enough, and then you learn in a certain environment like, oh, oh, that's that's what real hard work looks like. And I think you've got a young guy in Quinn Ewers who's always been so good He's always probably thought, oh, of course I'm working hard. And then you get into practices as a, as a freshman at this level, and you're like, oh, I don't know what that guy was supposed to do on that play in that situation, and maybe I would have if, oh, i got to work harder. I think it's, it's as simple as that. It's a maturation thing that everybody has to learn. Most quarterbacks at the collegiate level are able to learn that in the shadows – and not in the in the spotlight of a starting battle. Number two, I'm as a guy who has flown the Hudson card flag proudly, I might add, throughout the last 18 months or so, it's really disappointing that he's not better than he currently is. Because if Hudson Card was 75% of what I thought he would be even a year ago, I think he takes the starting job right now in camp. Ewers has afforded Card an opportunity to make him look like the mature, experienced guy, and Ewers is the super talented but doesn't know what the hell he's doing freshman, right? And it hasn't played out like that. They both feel and talking to people that get a chance to watch these guys on a daily basis, fairly even. And that's just not good enough for Hudson. And I think he's missed an opportunity because on war, I don't think I would have said in May or June or July that Hudson card even has a chance in the quarterback battle as it's turned out through the first half of camp. I mean, he ran with the ones on Saturday. He's had a chance. I don't think he's fully taken advantage of it yet. And if he wins the job, unlike a year ago, it was like hot shot young guy who everybody thinks has NFL talent. Here he comes. If he were, and I think Quinn Ewers is going to be the starter, but if in some universe out there, card gets the start over Ewers, it will be because they don't think Ewers is quite mentally ready to take that on more so than they think, Hudson Carr is just undeniable, and we cannot deny him. And then the third thing is, all right, well, we called out Brennan Marion. We called out Kyle Flood. Said those guys have to get their guys ready to play. And this is where we've got to call out Steve Sarkeesian and A.J. Milwee out a little bit and say, guys, still three weeks to the opener, so no, no reason to panic. But – You guys are the quarterback whisperers. Let's see some whispering because I I think up until now, that position has not been a massive position of excitement through the first week and a half of practice. Those dudes are really talented. And, you know, I think when they eventually take off, we'll we'll give the coaches a ton of credit. If at the end of the year, Quinn Ewers just dicing people up and throwing for 350 yards and four touchdowns every other game, we'll give every, we'll give the coaches their credit. In the meantime, they've got to see that that position is performing better than it has. Yeah, because what the what what cannot happen is the we can't have a quarterback battle that blows up in Sarkeesian's face again during the regular season. You know, that, 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 what happened last year can't happen again. And yes, you know, we know his history and, and all the, all that he's done and the guys that he's worked with and the guys that he developed. And, but that's good for your resume, right? And, that, and, that, and that's good for maybe give you hope, but every, you know, it's all about what have you done for me lately? Like that's the business. That is what this thing boils down to. 
people, the Texas fans aren't necessarily concerned about what you did with Mac Jones or, or Tua or any of those other guys. They want to know what are you going to do with these quarterbacks that you have here? What are you going to do with Hudson Card? What are you going to do with Quinn? How are you going to get these guys ready to go? And look, I, look, we clearly know Sarkeesian is working with them and and, and making sure that they, you know, in, in at least staying on top of them. But, you know, there's certain things that like you said, there's room for growth, uh, you know, the, you know to, to be hearing in August – that you know, Quinn Quinn is now starting to realize the importance of getting into the the the, the book more and then studying more and things to that effect. Well, that's good. It's good that the light bulb is is going off, especially in, in, after this live setting. You would have hoped though that he would have been pushed a little bit more in the spring, where he thought, "Oh man, I need that needs to happen. That needs to occur." Like you would have hoped that it it wouldn't be like now where he's going to maybe potentially have to play catch up and, you know, and then, and then from a Hudson perspective, you would have hoped that, all right, you, you guys have had him on campus this year too. He should be head and shoulders above what, what's going on here. Like what's going, what's going on and not going on from a practice setting. Um, that's getting these guys ready to, ready to go to your point catch. You know, we hit the panic button, but yeah, the, listen, the, if you're going to be the QB whisperer, you got to whisper to QBs. Whisper <laughs> then, That's it? Just, yes. I'm not saying make a song. I'm just saying it'd be nice if after this next scrimmage is over, someone says, you know, I heard some whispering out there at the quarterback position today. Oh, awesome. Awesome. I've been waiting for it. 